If you're using Logic Pro and you wanna improve your workflow, your organization, and save a lot of power for your computer, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video all the way through. What's up you guys, Nathan Larson here with another video for those of you guys who make music at home, whether you're a producer, composer, artist, songwriter, if you write and record your own music, at home, this is the channel for you. And I say this all the time, but if that sounds anything like you at all, you should subscribe to the channel right now and click the bell for notifications. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use track stacks within Logic Pro. This is a great way of getting a little more organized as well as saving a lot of time and energy on your computer. So I'm gonna be showing you specifically how to use summing track stacks, and I'll be explaining what that is once we actually jump into Logic. So with that, let's just jump into Logic. Okay, we are in Logic, and what I'm gonna do is show you two different sessions to show you the two different ways that you can go ahead and use track folders. Now, one of the things I wanna show you is that if you take, well, really the main thing I wanna show you is first of all, how to actually create the folders. And the next thing is that there are two different types of folders within Logic. There are two different purposes for each. So if we take a look at this session here, it's pretty large, we have a lot going on. Um, the first thing I would say is that you wanna get organized in terms of keeping everything in a very specific order that you are familiar with. For me, I put all my vocals on top, so everything from here all the way down to here, all vocals. Then I have my pads, keys, any strings below that, basses below that, and then drums below that. And then I always color coat my tracks to keep them organized too. So the first element of using track folders is purely for organization, okay? And the second one we'll talk about next. So make sure you watch this entire video to get to that. So first thing you need to do is select more than one track, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and select, say, these two tracks here, let's zoom in. And if you do control click, you're gonna be able to go down here and create a track stack. You could also do shift command D like that, okay? Now, what you can do is create a summing track or a folder stack. Now, I can't do folder because I already have a folder stack uh, created here. However, if this is just two separate tracks in here that are not within a folder already, you can create either one, okay? So now, what I wanna show you is in this session, I used folder stacks, okay? We're gonna be able to organize this all to make this a lot easier to kind of take in. That is the purpose of a folder stack. It's just gonna basically organize everything into a folder. So I've got my drums stack, and I can then collapse everything here. So we can take a very complex looking session like this, and then we can literally dumb it down to a certain degree like this to make it look very easy to digest. Make sense? That is the purpose of a folder stack. Okay, so this right here, the drums, it's a folder stack. Now you can control this with volume, right? So you have a volume fader. You can create different groups. So you, if I wanted to, I could group my drum and my bass folder stack together. But the main thing that you need to know about is with a folder stack, the entire purpose is simply organization. Like that, that is it. <laughs> it's just to organize everything. You can't really do a whole whole lot else beyond that within a folder stack other than adjusting the volume. So again, main thing here with folder stacks is remember organization. That is it. Beyond volume, there's not a whole lot you can do within folder stacks. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and just create, let's go ahead and create two new tracks. Okay, now these tracks are just MIDI tracks. They are uh, not in a track stack, okay? <clears throat> so what I can do here is, let's just go ahead and pull up a piano sound here. Um, just, I'm not gonna use any third party stuff just for the sake of saving us some time. Let's just do another one there, I don't know. And then what I'm gonna do is actually grab some of the stuff in here, down there, just so we actually have some audio to work with so I can really fully demonstrate this to you. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just solo these two things out. Okay, it sounds pretty terrible because this is just Logic stuff and I haven't done anything to it. Um, but what we're gonna do is go ahead and let's decide we wanna put these two things in a track stack. So we're gonna go ahead and again, you can create a track stack either by clicking here. I just like doing command option D. Now, since this is not in a stack, you can create a folder stack or a summing stack. Okay, what I'm gonna do is a summing stack and watch what happens when I do this. It's gonna have some, so I'm just gonna do demonstration. Now, within this summing stack, what I wanna kinda key you in on is this right here. Notice that that says bus 12. If I go to the, to the drums, there, there's nothing here, right? Because it's a folder stack. But we have auto, audio effects, we have sends, we can do the grouping just like that. We can also do panning 
basically, this is functioning exactly like a regular track or a bus track or an auxiliary channel, okay? So what we can do is, since this is bus 12, what this is essentially doing is taking these two pieces of audio here, or the, this MIDI, MIDI channels, and you can see the output has now been sent to bus 12 under demonstration. Look at the drums in here. This is a stereo out. So this is just going straight to the stereo output, whereas in the demonstration one, this is going to bus 12, which is basically this track right here. This is now basically converted into a bus. Now, if you need any guidance on that, I have an entire video on buses. I'll have that linked up here and in the description down below. However, what we can now do is start adding effects on here that are going to affect both of these tracks or anything that we put within it. So just to show you an example, let's go ahead and throw an EQ on here. Let's do a filter. We're gonna go and put this in latch mode and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this. So we could do something like that um, and then we can read it. And then now we can go in and check that out. So we can see we've done this automation. I'm gonna make this like way more extreme. Let's just do that. So now we can hear it. Okay, so then now we've got this automated EQ, okay? So we can do things like that within here. Let's go ahead and shut that off. But then another thing that we can do is we can start doing other things like sends. So for example, what I could do is I could say, hey, you know what? Um, I want both of these pianos to go to a delay. So I've got the stereo delay over here, so I can actually send this to that and now check this out. So this is now getting sent to an effects bus within a bus. So this is basically a bus that all the audio is going to. And then from there, I can send everything to another one. And then it goes to the stereo out, which is really, really cool. So this functions very similarly to just buses in general. So if you don't really grasp on that, again, watch, watch my entire video, uh, The Ultimate Guide to Using Buses, okay? So we can do that. And then we can also start compressing. We could do a cue all the different things that we can do within here. So that is how you can create summing tracks. Now, I know you're probably wondering, why Why would you wanna have these different things? What, what are we using this for? What's the ultimate kind of end goal? Why would you even use folder stacks versus summing stacks, okay? So to kind of give you the rundown, the reason I use folders on here instead of summing tracks is because this is not my mixing session. This is purely the session that I was using for the actual production that I was doing. So. I really didn't need these summing stacks. I just needed to keep things organized because what I'm gonna end up doing when I mix something like this is I'm gonna start completely from scratch. So if you're doing your own mixing or even if you're hiring out your mixing, there's not really a whole big reason to have summing stacks when you know you're gonna have a mixer or do yourself all that. And I don't think that if you're mixing yourself, you should be doing it within the exact same session as the production. It's actually a really good idea to completely start from scratch and really decide, okay, the production is done. We are now moving into the mixing stage. So if the, that's where you're at, you're just producing, you want things to be organized, use folders. If you are in a position where you're saying, hey, like I'm, I'm done with this, I'm now moving on to the mixing stage, export all of it to audio and then start from scratch. And then from there, that's when I would start creating summing tracks. So what I'm gonna do is open up a new session and show you how I did that for one of my clients. Okay, so now in this session, what I'm gonna show you is specifically the summing tracks and just a couple ways that I could use this just in an actual real life situation or scenario. Now, this was a session that I mixed. I usually don't do mixing and actually I don't, I don't do mixing anymore, but this is one that I did do. Um, and what I used was uh, these tr summing tracks just specifically as, as buses, L literally that's it. And you can see I even named them here, bus, right? Vox bus. Um, so I've got the chorus bus, verse one, pre-chorus, verse two, bridge. All these are just vocals. And then what I'm able to do is do the bulk of the processing just on this track stack instead of having to do stuff within the actual vocal itself. So you can see here, all I've done on the individual vocals is just an EQ, a little bit of compression, and then I use Parallel Aggressor, which is just a really cool plugin. Um, shout out to, to Baby Audio. You guys should seriously check it out. They, it's, it's awesome. So um, Parallel Aggressor is basically a way of using parallel compression without having to send it out, and it's, it sounds really great. Um, but then what I'm doing is doing all the majority of my processing on the bus or on the track stack, the summing track stack. So you can see here, I actually have all the rest of what I've done here. And then I have the different sends. So this is sending to RC24 and this one's sending to QL spaces where I have actually filtered out some of that as well. And so we're gonna wind up with like, let's go to the chorus here. 
And uh, let's actually open this up. We'll just solo this out. Cause all I need is you, you. Okay, but I processed all this basically within here. And then uh, you can do any sort of automation within there, within the track stack or within the buses as well. So if you wanna bump things up, take things down or whatever it is you wanna do, you can do all of that from here. So there's a ton of value, a ton of benefit from doing that. So my suggestion is if you've not been using track stacks, you should be hopping in and using track stacks on virtually every single session that you do. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. That'll let you know whenever a new video comes out. If you like the video, like the video for the YouTube algorithm. That helps me out a ton. It's obviously free. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comment section below. If you look at any of my other videos in the comment section, I respond to almost every single comment. So with that said, we'll see you next week.